Hello and welcome to another episode of Reasonably Catholic, where we answer your questions about the Catholic faith. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below this video. And for today, let's see what we got. The question is, what extra biblical evidence is there that Jesus existed as a historical person? Just like once when Jesus gave the Pharisees a single sign of Jonah to help their belief, we'll give you many reasons why Jesus was a historical figure and not a figment of someone's imagination that spread like wildfire and fictional stories came to be. This idea that Jesus is a fictional character was argued by a German critic named Bruno Bauer, who was a Karl Marx's teacher. The view that Jesus never existed or that Jesus was not a real person is called mythicism. So let's look at the top three reasons that can be used to argue for the existence of the person of Jesus of Nazareth who started Christianity in the first half of the first century. So starting from the bottom, let's look at number three. The leading academic position is that Jesus existed. Even if any Christian were to never investigate the proofs of the existence of Jesus, they would still be correct in believing that Jesus was a real person. I admit, this is the weakest of my three reasons, but I list it to show that there is no serious debate among the vast majority of scholars in the fields related to the question of the existence of Jesus. For example, Robert Funk, the founder of Jesus Seminar, a group dedicated to uncover the truth about the historicity of Jesus, denies that Jesus was God or that he rose from the dead. But he never denies that Jesus was a real person. He writes in his book, Jesus, a Revolutionary Biography, and I quote, That Jesus was crucified is as sure as anything historical can be. In addition, Bart Ehrman, one of the famous agnostics in his book, Did Jesus Exist, wrote, and I quote, The view that Jesus existed is held by virtually every expert on the planet. Coming to number two, there were early church fathers who loved to battle heresies and the church was indeed battling with heresies like Arianism, Gnosticism and Donatism. However, there was never a record, not a single one, of mythicism plaguing the early church. And no early church father, including Irenaeus, who loved to prove heresies wrong, ever wrote anything condemning mythicism. And finally, coming to the number one reason to prove that Jesus existed comes from the Jews of the first century. First century Jewish historian Josephus hints that Jesus was a Jew in the first century Palestine when he writes that Jesus' brother was executed in 62 AD. Another historian, Tacitus, in his writings says Jesus was, and I quote, executed during the rule of Tiberius by the procurator Pontius Pilate. Also around the year 110, Lawyer, author and magistrate of the ancient Rome, Pliny the Younger, notes he interviewed people in his province of Bithynia, which is modern Turkey, who had been Christians 20 years earlier, which would be around the year 90. The movement had made such an impact on his territory that the sellers of animals for pagan sacrifices had suffered an economic trend of loss and pagan temples were almost deserted. Tacitus in his writings and Suetonius in his writing called The Lives of the Caesars in the volume about Nero talks about Christians and the Christian movement in Rome during the reign of Nero. So, to conclude, all the sources and reasons agree that Christianity was a new movement beginning in the first half of the first century and its founder was a man known as Jesus from Nazareth as real a person as you and me. That's all we have for you today in this episode of Reasonably Catholic. Please like and share this video and if you have any questions about the Catholic faith, please post them in the comment section below this video. So until the next time, stay blessed.